So here's my poor snowmobile. <laughs> the old Formula 500. I went to change the track in it and I uh, found a couple other parts that it that it needed needed to have replaced. That's the chain case there with all the gears. Um, I took the exhaust off from it, the whole chain case itself, and on this side, I took the whole uh, the whole drive axle out. In order to get the uh, in order to get the track out, you have to take this drive axle out. Those are all the sprockets that move the track. So I got to replace the bearing that goes on the end of this because that was spent and a couple bearings that were in the chain case and seals that were leaking. I got to do those. And I, I kind of caught all this before the stuff actually went real bad, you know. I didn't want to be stranded. I probably could have got another thousand miles out of the stuff, but it would have been in really bad shape if I had waited that long. Um, the chain case was leaking because of the bad seals and the, the bearings were going bad in them, so. That's the uh, stock bottom gear right there. And I'm also doing an upgrade. The uh, the upper sprocket, um, the stock one is a 23 tooth and this one that I'm using is a 21 tooth from a, uh, a 380 skidoo. has a stock 21 tooth upper gear. Um, by doing that, that upper gear is what would normally be up here. Oh, cheers, by the way. Natty Light, our sponsor. Um, that upper gear drives the lower gear, and uh, by making it a little bit smaller, it makes a less, less load for the engine, and it's able to uh, take off faster, basically. So I'll lose a little bit of miles per hour on the top end, but I'll gain a lot of speed out of the hole on the bottom end. In order to take the track out you have to take the uh, rear suspension out. So that's the whole rear suspension. Um, those red slides on the bottom, they call them slides or sliders. Those are all good. I've already replaced them a couple years ago. All the bogey wheels are good. Um, they all have just bearings in them in the center of them. And the shocks are good so that's all that's all good. There's no cracks or anything like that. This is the old track. This is why I had to replace the track. Um, everywhere where there used to be studs, there's only a couple studs left here and there. And uh, all those holes are basically, <laughs> well, not the holes that are in a line, but all the holes in the middle and a couple on the edge, they've all pulled through. They've pulled out. So it wouldn't have been long before this track would have probably broke on me. And that's a black mark from where this motorcycle uh, did a burnout in this garage. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Let's see. Oh, that's a sexy looking Mazda right there. Yes, it is. So I was checking out the underneath of this. You can see in the front where the studs were coming through the uh, old track. And you can see where they were hitting the metal on the front. Every time, it, you know, I'd always know if I was losing a stud because you'd hear it hitting the uh, the metal frame. And luckily it didn't hit the, the heat exchanger. There's only a couple marks where it might have rubbed up against it a little bit, but it didn't. Uh, the heat exchanger is basically like a car radiator. The coolant flows through that, and that's what cools the engine, is the uh, the snow that, that uh, gets thrown against the uh, heat exchanger, so... If you end up getting a hole in your heat exchanger, you lose all your coolant, and then you end up blowing your engine. So you got to be careful about that. Um, this track, <clears throat> I studied this track all by myself. It's the uh, first time I ever attempted it. It's a used track that I picked up for 100 bucks, but I had to drill every single hole with a special uh, track uh, drill bit. And then I had to actually ratchet every single stud through there. <laughs> it was a good two or three hour project. So how it basically works is you have this track template and you have on each on each one, on each lug, you have holes one, two, three 
on each side and they're staggered very slightly and uh, so you where all the slots are you put that over the lugs of the track and then you drill all the one holes out and then you move it down then you drill all the two holes move it down then all the three holes and then uh, it repeats itself four times on a standard track like what I have and uh, so you end up with four complete patterns that kind of move along from the inside to the out it's a lot of work it's a lot of work but you know the best way to to gain experience doing this is just by getting into it just grab some tools and just start ripping shit apart and <laughs> get yourself a little shop manual and you can do all this yourself I mean if you if you wanted somebody else to replace your track for you you would pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars um, the only money I'm gonna have to spend is for the replacement bearings that I have to replace and the oil seals and of course the you know the track was a hundred bucks like I said but it's uh you know it's cheap maintenance once I get this done this sled is gonna last another two or three years easily and uh, it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun it's worth it you know it's worth the effort over the years I have done some modifications on this stock exhaust pipe I actually cut it here and I cut it here I slid the whole thing apart I cut out all the middle baffles and then I put it all back together and re-welded it it's not that pretty but uh, it works it kinda hollowed out the baffle section and made it a little bit louder not too loud and uh, gave it some more power. The other modification that I've done is I eliminated the air box. By taking the air box out, the air box is kind of restrictive, and I put on those two separate uh, uni air filters. Gives it a little bit more power. I've noticed that it, it takes longer to warm up the engine now, uh, but once the engine's completely warm, with that combination with the intake and the exhaust modified definitely gave it some more power probably another 10 horse when I first bought this sled it had a burnt piston and we had to put a new piston into it got it all back together and it would run good until um, I don't know you'd open the throttle wide open and then it would start backfiring and and uh, apparently you know I think that was the cause of the the piston burning and went through all kinds of different stuff. The CDI box, the coil, I was thinking it was electrical, um, messed around with the the timing. Finally, after a lot of work and pulling my hair out, found that it was actually the fuel pump. And the fuel pump was supplying fuel, which is what threw me for a loop because it was getting fuel, but it turned out the pressure just wasn't high enough. So the carburetors were running out of gas on wide open throttle and then the engine was going lean. Now I'm using a 12 volt electric fuel pump which is for like a low pressure carburetor system. Normally you'd use one of these on a, a vehicle but um, I did hook up a, a pressure gauge and the pressure was just a little bit too high when I first put it on. It was, um, it was blowing the needle in the seat in the carburetor and it was coming out the overflow so I put on a resistor that's a, a heater blower motor resistor from one of my parts vehicles and that cut down the uh, that cut down the voltage to the pump from 12 volts to I think probably about 8 volts and in turn that cut down the pressure enough so that it was it worked great you know for the carburetors where it's uh, an electric start sled it primes as soon as you hit the switch which I can demonstrate As soon as you turn the switch on, before you hit the start, uh, it primes the carburetors and everything's good. So if this quits, it'll just shut off. You know, it, it won't, this won't run lean as far as, you know, unless something else happens to the carburetors. If this electric pump stops, the sled will just shut off and uh, I won't risk any damage of, uh, you know, melting another piston like that. <laughs> It was a cheap fix. That pump was only, <clears throat> I think, $30 at a local parts store. 
other than that it's been a, a great sled and um, that's about it for this video cheers